deep beats and a succulent motion. Like a diamond catching the height when I close my eyes. Spellbinding with my soul, it touched me. It touched me more than once. Where the river builds, the gentle waves of fruity moments. Yes, it is my river. Yes, it is my river, my Luit, my Luit, so called Brahmaputra, and it flows. And it flows forever and ever. Even though the river basin of the Brahmaputra attracts the attention of the geologists of the world, which is spread over three countries like Tibet in China, India, and Bangladesh. In India, the total basin area of Brahmaputra River starting from Arunachal Pradesh is 1,97,316 square kilometer, which is 5.9% of the total geographic area of the country. The river is spread over the northeastern states like Arunachal Pradesh, Assam and the states of West Bengal. The Brahmaputra is multi-channel and multi-pattern river and has a wide river bed. and it's widening gradually. In the last century, it has increased from 4,000 to 6,000 square kilometer. Few of the tributaries of the river have recorded a significant high water year due to the high monsoon rainfall, especially in the upper catchments. Like all the great civilizations, the Brahmaputra Valley civilization is also the gift of the river. It is the river that helped many cities and townships flourishing and blooming along its way. The city of Guwahati is one of these. Guwahati, the largest city of the northeastern region, is situated on the bank of the river Brahmaputra. It is the gateway of northeast India, 
Since early times, this port city along the side of River Brahmaputra has been the center of administration, trade and commerce and all significant socio-political events. We are standing here at this tall Northbrook Gate, which was constructed to welcome a British Viceroy, Lord Northbrook, and the name itself of this gate is given after him. And it is built um, by the side of the Shukreshwar Ghat where he anchored his ship. Absolutely true. And one more interesting fact about this monument is this is one of its kind monuments which is still standing still and strong, a brick architecture which is over 140 years old and has been seeing the developing Guwahati since then. The discovery of a large number of stone sculpture at the Ambari archaeological site along with pieces of evidence of terracotta sculptures and other antiques proved the importance of this township in ancient period. If we go back to the history of Assam, it all started in the year 350 when, they, uh, when the uh, Burman dynasty first established their dynasty and after that many kings, many rulers tried to conquer and you ruled Assam for many many years. Say, Ken was there, Pala was there, there was uh, Chutia Kingdom, then there is Mughal invasion, uh, not Mughal exactly, the Muslim invasion. The first Muslim invasion happened during uh, 1206 when Bakhtiar Khilji came to invade Assam, but unfortunately he did not succeed. And then it was the time when Saulung Sukafa, the first Ahom king, came to Assam and ruled Assam and made history throughout the world, in the entire globe. That is. They ruled for 600 long years. Nobody ever did so far. And later on, British came into the picture. And after that, all the civilization, the present history, everybody knows about it. On top of that, since I said everything happened by the side of Brahmaputra, that means the civilization has been happening since 3050, 350, 350 uh, 350 till now, that is 2018. So, the Brahmaputra has been witnessing all those civilizations, all those cultures, all those kingdoms. And I promise you to bring out whatever we can, right? Yeah. So, as the river flows, we keep you showing the new and the old Assam. Ahum during their reign wanted to hold their possession over the city. It was the reason Guwahati was seat of the Ahum general of the Lower Assam. Again, during the British period, the township was selected as the headquarters of the administration. In the year 1872, a head post office and railway station in 1890 was established at Guwahati. Accordingly, many officers were set up on the south bank of the river. On the other hand, the north bank emerged as a residential area. As per the census of 1850, the population of the township was 7,000. Four main market areas at four directions during the colonial period were the main controlling commercial center. These were the Chok Bazaar, the old name of the present Uzan Bazaar, that is in the east of the city, one near Borolu Bridge on the west and Polton Bazaar in the south and Fancy Bazaar in the midwest. Under the colonial patronage, Guwahati was developing as a promising township. 
On the other hand, this newly developed area was lacking some basic civil amenities. Realizing the fact, in the year 1853, a municipal board was constituted to look into the development matters of the township. And after 24 years, Gohati received the status of a first-class municipality. In the year 1848, the steamer service between Calcutta and Gohati began. It transformed Gohati into a vital port city of the country. The construction of Assam Bengal Railway Line in the year 1897 was a turning point in the history of modern Guwahati. In 1972, the total jurisdiction of the city area rose to 216.09 square kilometer with 34 wards and in 1974, it was converted to municipal corporation. Today, the state capital, Jaspur, is also located within the city. The city of Guwahati is now emerging as an economic power to the region. The history of the great river and the people of the valley couldn't be completed without Guwahati. Few of the historical monuments standing tall amidst the city tells us our glorious past. The city has experienced presence of Mughal army noticed the cruelty of the Burmese invaders and colonial diplomacy. Today's Guwahati is counted among the fastest growing cities in the country. With a population of nearly 10 lakhs, it is the most populated and largest city in the northeast. This riverine city is expanding towards the north and the south at a drastic pace. Gradually, the city life is moving fast forward. The Ministry of Urban Development, Government of India has initiated the process of upgradation of the city to smart city. Another historic city of the state, the city of Tatewur, is also situated on the bank of the river. It is the largest township on the north bank of Brahmaputra. The city is known for its cultural heritage and legends associated with. Today, more than one lakh people are living in this age-old township. During the British rule, Tatewur was the headquarter of the Dorong district. It was in the year 1835. So we are at Jahaz Ghat, again a place which has its own history, right? Yeah. Well, this place uh, was a epicenter of waterways during the British period. Mm -hmm. uh, ferries from different parts of Assam came here mm -hmm. and uh, it wasn't like this. Uh, right now what you see is because of the earthquake of 1950, mm -hmm. the Brahmaputra became shallow. Yeah. And because of that, uh, this place uh, lost its relevance and slowly and steadily because of the development of transport and communication also, this place slowly and steadily lost its relevance. Now you see uh, uh, the ferries which were in abundance at that time, now you, you see hardly see ferry these days. Yeah, only but a few. Still, guess, yeah. But still there are a few. But this place, uh, it has its own importance as uh, nearby there is a railway station, Tejpur railway station. Is it what, functioning? Yeah, uh, it is defunct now. It, it, it is functioning. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, what the history is that uh, the British uh, uh, they were interested in tea, of course. Mm -hmm. What they did was that tea uh, it was brought here by uh, the ship cargo, uh, the motorboat. So, railway station was built in the year 1895. 1895, oh, centuries ago. And the history is that uh, the railway station it is now dysfunctional, but it was in prominence during the time of. Uh, Chinese aggression. Okay. Just before the time of Chinese aggression, uh, when Dalai Lama he had to flee Tibet, 
He came to Tejpur and he went to Masuri from this railway station. We'll go there now. Via train. Yeah, via train. The city is also known for its cultural roots and history. It had witnessed few of the India's remarkable political events. In the year of 1959, this small township attracted the world politics and presses. When the Tibetan spiritual leader Dalai Lama escaped from Lhasa and requested political asylum in India. The story began when an uprising erupted in Lhasa against the Chinese rule in the month of March that year. As a result, the People's Republic of China (PRC) intensified its repression in the rebel-led areas. In the same year, the Brahmaputra Valley witnessed a massive influx of refugees from the Tibet causing a major humanitarian, administrative and security crisis in the valley. NEFA was their first choice. Indian authorities welcomed all the refugees. They gave shelter, arranged transport facilities for the women and children, thousands of temporary transit camps were erected, food supplies were ensured through air droppings. Three years later, a greater crisis erupted at the Indochino border. China invaded Northeastern Frontier Agency, now Arunachal Pradesh. Chinese war. In the winter of 1962, Chinese armies entered Indian territories and kept moving towards the north of Arunachal Pradesh, which was then a part of Assam. Now the Red Army was heading towards Tejpur. The sudden Chinese invasion paralyzed the entire government machineries as well as the administration. There was panic in the air. People were leaving their homes, they evacuated the town by bus, train, truck and even on foot. The jails were opened, the prisoners were released, inmates of the mental hospitals were also set free. The currencies available with the banks were burned, coins were dumped secretly. Women were being trained by the home guard for civil defense duties. This war was a humanitarian emergency for the Indian government. For the first time in the independent India, the Brahmaputra Valley witnessed a massive mobilization of armed troops. Today, Tejpur is a popular tourist destination. The Nameri National Park, known for its bird species, is only 35 kilometers from the city, a paradise for wildlife, spreading over 200 square kilometer. On its journey from the ice-capped Himalaya to the plains of Assam and Bangladesh, the river experiences different climatic regimes. The Brahmaputra Basin also experiences different annual rainfalls, ranging from 1200 mm to 6000 mm throughout its diverse journey. All these make the Brahmaputra River Basin unique. Monsoon is always special for the river. It recuperates the river and the entire river basin. It is the monsoon that contributes to the 70% of the total rainfall of the Brahmaputra basin.
Gajiranga National Park. The splendid ecosystem of the region is the creation of the river Brahmaputra. The Brahmaputra supports a great variety of fauna and flora along its journey. Assam is also known for its wildlife and rare species. Over 500 species of birds have been recorded in the protected areas of the state. The Asian elephant and dharmic species such as pygmy hog and golden langur, the Gangetic river dolphin, eastern swamp deer, the black softshell turtle and Assam roofed turtle are some of them for which the state is known for. The river moves silently through the northern part of one of the world's famous park, known for the one-horned rhino. The Kajiranga National Park, it is the highly fertile footplains of the river Brahmaputra that is felicitating the growth of wetlands and grasslands of the park. The Kajiranga National Park is a symbol of pride for the people of the state. It is the home of the largest population of Indian one-horned rhinos. Among the protected areas, Kajiranga has the highest tiger density in the world. This is an important tiger project of the country. This national park is also famous for water buffalo. Among 57% of the world's water buffalo population is living in this park. Spreading over an area of 430 square kilometer, Kaziranga was declared as World Heritage Place by UNESCO in the year 1985. It is the largest protected wildlife area in the sub-Himalayan belt. The Brahmaputra and its tributaries are continuously contributing towards the wildlife of the region. <laughs>